So consider just how much more life this has. Ah, good hello. It's been a while since I've done just a regular good old animation tutorial. It is time. I'd like to show you a technique, an efficient trick, if you will, uh, for making still images a lot more dynamic. Just give them that little bit of flair of life and movement. This technique works great for that uh, genre of video where it's, you know, like the narrated story, animatic sort of thing. Almost anything really, where you're more likely to be using a series of still images, but you can almost disguise it as if it were a real animation by doing this. It's great fun to do, it's very easy. You produce quite quick and effective results with subtle changes creating all sorts of different sorts of movements for different feels and moods and scenarios. So for this video I've made three drawings. Guy standing there, guy standing there with his finger up in the air and guy pointing and that's it. I'm gonna make a good five to 10 second thing out of just these three movements. So this is something that you can do in any animation software that has motion tweening. So Flash, Toon Boom, Toons, Anime Studio, that all of those should be just fine. And the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is take all of those drawings and just line them up across the timeline, cycling back and forth uh, in according to your dialogue or sound, however you want it to be, or even just in a random order for the sake of practicing this now. With all the drawings spread out, looks just like this. Cycling back and forth between each of the images. Kind of gets the point across, but it's lacking something. So this sequence exists inside of one peg. If you were using flash, it would be inside of a symbol. And inside of this peg, I'll put in a keyframe, one frame before the drawing changes, two after it, and one just as the drawing changes as well. Leaving us with only this four frame movement. On the second keyframe, right when the image changes position, select a scaling tool, free transform or advanced scale, move its position pivot point down to the uh, core base and give it just a little bit of that. So you see how subtle that is. Pull it up and in. So it's important that it has that little bit of in and out as well. Whatever you pull it up by, that's what it has to go in at the same time. When it plays, you get that. It's mostly effective because of its very distinct snap, because it goes from its most normal position to its most extreme and then settles down over a period of two frames. We can give it a little bit more polish by on this last frame, right click along timeline view and activate the timeline view option, giving us all of these tools. We wanna click this one here, which is set ease for multiple parameters. On this last frame, left time ratio, pump it up to around uh, 30, hit apply and close. And that will give it just a, it's almost indistinguishable, but it will now slow its ease out, which does look quite a bit nicer. Now check this out. If I take this first keyframe here and pull it back by just one and play that. Look at that, it's, that, that is an extremely different feel. And it's literally just a single frame difference. Likewise, if I pull the ease down out further, maybe give it an even more extreme ease of about 50, the looks changed yet again. Almost like he's more slowly raising his finger rather than coming up with a quite sudden point. Now returning to the regular position, the easiest way to do this is to copy those frames and then right click and hit paste reverse. Realign the frames so that transition happens just as it did before. And there you go. So that works quite well, but what can make it even nicer is if we do a fresh one, punch in those same three keyframes and this time stretch it downwards a little bit. <laughs> That's probably too much. If you wanna make it lesser, but you're still kinda of happy with the direction it was going in, see this gap here? If I make a keyframe there and then pull it over the top of the first one, what was that in between is now the key. There you go. So that looks quite nice. For a movement like this point forwards, we could just take that same keyframe movement again. This is one of the huge advantage of using pegs is that the animation can be applied to any drawings at all. I can paste it down here and see the same movement play out. Now it is quite effective. We're gonna do things a little bit differently this time. The same keyframe pacing, but on the core one in the middle, rather than a scale, I'm gonna give it a shear by bending it forwards just a little bit. So rather than a pop, it's a flick. <laughs> That's probably a bit much, so I can do my in-between keyframe trick again. But so of course, in returning back to this pose, we can do the same thing again, having it shear backwards just a little bit this time. But where we can really take it a little bit step further is when we pull this one back, 
and it gives it that anticipation. We can give it a polar opposite anticipation, if that makes sense. So with this keyframe immediately before the drawing changes, put in a new keyframe to before it. This one is going to shear forwards. So it's gonna flick very suddenly from a shear forwards to one backwards before settling into its final pose. Let's see how that looks. There you go. So that's a different mood yet again. I'm gonna create a similar look for this next one, moving into the finger raise once again. So two keyframes either side of the drawing transition and one uh, with a single frame distance either side. This one will be squashing down just a bit and this one will be pulled up just a bit, remembering to keep the mass the same. So there you go. He has a little bit of a pull down before he hops up. It's important to keep the mass uh, the same, which is, you know, for however much you pull it up is how much you bring it in and vice versa. If I were to not do this and just have it stretch down and stretch up, it creates an almost undesired look Rather than it being a bounce per se, it does look more like a stretch. See what I mean? Once more on this point forward, I'm gonna do the same sort of keyframe layout again. Going back to our original shear type movement where it's gonna pull back and then pull forwards, creating that look. Uh, but we're gonna take advantage of easing a bit more this time. Pull it back to have two frames of in-betweening at the beginning and three at the end. And we're gonna give it a quite extreme amount of easing, 50 at the end. And the one at the start will have 40, which creates this look. It ramps up and slows down, showing how much is launching into this movement. Remember that keyframe cycles can be recycled. I'll take this one from earlier when he moves up into the finger raise and use it to restore the finger raise back to the middle like that. This time I'm gonna add a one frame spacing between the two most extreme points. Pull it back one frame so that the drawing transition is when it reaches the tallest most point, which looks like that. So that's a pretty cool result there. I'm gonna start mixing together some of the other things we've learned now. Pull the ending keyframe out by a few more frames, give it a fairly strong ease of 60. to show I'm coming to rest. For this final movement, point up and down, it's time to combine everything we've talked about so far to create something rather dynamic indeed. So first I put down two keyframes to signify the start and the end of the movement and then slap in a few others. It doesn't need to be the final positioning, but just a rough guide on all the positional movement that I'm gonna have. Uh, the first is gonna be a squash down and a shear to the left. This one will just be a pull up and this one will be pulled down and sheared to the right. See how that looks. This creates the longest movement yet, which depending on what you're going for may be exactly what you're after. One of my favorite things about this technique though is how it doesn't really show off that there is much movement happening. It's very snappy, it's very poppy. So pull eases up to a quite harsh extreme. And I'm gonna compress these tweens together like so, because this one is acting as an in-between, remember, it's straight up with no shear. There we go. So it's floppy, but also snappy. Moving into the finger raise, I'm going to take an exact reversal of this one, just line it up so that the uh, drawing change happens at the right moment. Yeah, that works quite well. And to conclude it off, one of the original types, just three frames, very subtle squash down. There we go. Final sequence. So consider just how much more life this has. It actually appears to be animated, even though it's literally completely just three drawings. And just like that, we already have 200 completed frames of animation, so that's pretty good. I'd be happy with that. And considering again, that this is attached to a peg. So when you've got a few of these sort of uh, built up and archived, I know I like to go back and sort of just copy and paste them all around and can put together uh, lots of dynamic movements out of still drawings very, very quickly. Have a think about which ones would be more appropriate for you in context to the, uh, the type of dialogue that would be using at the time. Would it be surprise, determination, 
sadness. Give it a try, it's very efficient, and I think gets pretty decent results.